Hi guys, Wayne here again. Uh, gonna do a uh, a video, I think, on a subject that, like the auto collimator, isn't well. At least I've found that well documented at all on YouTube, and uh, not a whole lot out on the web other than academic papers and and uh, publications from National Institute of Standards and Testing and other national laboratories. So in my uh, pursuit of measuring the straightness of, of my well well measured straight edge now, <laughs> yes, once again, you're going to see my straight edge, uh, but this isn't going to be with the auto collimator. This is going to be using a method called reversal, a reversal methods. Uh, I stumbled across this and actually I know I knew of one for a good many years. I never knew it was a reversal method. A lot of people do know about it, and that's where you can check a level, calibrate it. It's self-checking. You put the level down, line it up on a on a along a rail on a surface plate or some other uh, surface. You see where the bubble is spin the level 180 degrees and the bubble should go back to the same reading if it's calibrated properly. If it's not, you tweak the tweak the bubble and keep doing that iteratively until you get the required uh, calibration uh, uh, you know figured out. Uh, well, I think, like I said, a lot of people have used that to check the accuracy of levels. Masons do it. Carpenters do it. It's a common technique with with the spirit levels. Um, I'm going to show you the math behind it. Uh, the math isn't particularly complicated, but uh, it's an important concept to go on to learning the other reversal methods that you would use for checking the straightness of a straight edge, the straightness of a machine. You know, does do do do, do the uh, does the carriage on a lathe move in a straight line? Uh, and also uh, checking squareness of a machine tool. Uh, you know, a head going up and down on a on a vertical mill lathe spindle run out. How do you 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 put a a, a gauge pin and a collet and a lathe spindle and you check the total indicated runout with a test indicator. How much of that error is in the gauge pin? How much of that error is in the spindle? And I know my little South Bend lathe over here, the gauge pin is way more accurate than what that spindle is. So anything I see on the indicator is more than likely going to be in, in the machine itself. But this is how they check air bearing spindles, very high precision spindles. When you're using high accuracy artifacts to check a high accuracy spindle, somehow you have to split out the errors and the reversal methods is how they do it. So I'm going to address that as well, best I can. Um, I stumbled across this actually watching YouTube videos. Uh, there's a gentleman called uh, Dan Gilbart. He has a, a channel that's not real active. He's got maybe a grand total of 20 or 21 videos posted there. 18 of them is a series that he did uh, on prototyping. Now he's a very smart guy, really liked the videos, very water jet centric, uh, but he got, does know he does know his business. He does know working with his hands and shop techniques and uh, he addresses a whole bunch of different aspects of prototyping up through and including high precision measurements and he briefly mentions reversal methods he shows the checking the straightness of some of a, of a of a parallel on a surface plate and he more or less addresses the technique but he doesn't really go into detail on how you do it well, it took me quite a bit of digging to get this information uh, compiled uh, so I'm going to try to make a decent video and hopefully when I'm done you'll know all there is to know about reversal methods and uh, how you use them. They're pretty cool. Uh, so with that I think I'll get going. 
let's get on with uh, presenting reversal methods. Uh, this is a vial that I bought off eBay. Well, not just the vial, the whole black part is a level of uh, spirit level assembly that I bought off of eBay and I've mounted it to this aluminum rail. I have a couple pads milled on the bottom, 10 inch spacing. And in messing around with this thing, getting it calibrated and trying to determine its sensitivity, uh, I've determined the sensitivity to be uh, one thousandths and ten inches for each line. So, and then the other thing too is that when this is perfectly calibrated, I have purposely taken this out of calibration, tweaked it a little bit, because I needed to, I had it to adjusted really, really nice, and I had to tweak it out so I could show how this reversal mathematics work with a level. Make, it will make more sense, I think, when I go to the straight edge and use a dial indicator. But this kind of illustrates what's going on and uh, with the level. And as they say, this is probably the simplest example of reversal method. So that being said, when this thing is calibrated and if the plate was perfectly level, the bubble should be centered between these two lines either side of the large marks. So as you can see, and also arbitrarily, I've chosen a coordinate system. This side over here is the positive side. This side over here is the negative side. Again, that's just arbitrary. Uh, I could have gone either way, and I just chose this direction. And as you can see, I am just about flush with this double, or with the large hash mark, with the ha large hash line here. Uh, so that tells me that this is over two thousandths, two lines, one thousandths per line, so that's two thousandths over ten inches. And it's to the plus side, so it's a plus two thousandths. So I'll, I'll record that. And then I do the reversal, which is, as a good many people know, you just do a 180 degree spin of the level. And let's let that settle in. Now I want you to notice that I I spun the level 180 degrees. The coordinate system stayed the same sign. So the surface plate error, how much the plate is out of level, didn't change. I didn't change sign. However, the spirit level did change. So now, looking at it here, I can say, for all intents and purposes, that this went to the negative side. The bubble went this way this time. It went to the negative side. And um, it is about one thousandths over one line. So I'm going to call this negative one. Again, I'll write that down. And uh, then I will uh, get set up and show you show you the numbers. So again, keep in mind that this is when it was uh, originally started. The original orientation was two to plus two thousandths, 180 degree reversal, negative one thousandths. So let me get the uh, the uh, document. Oh, and actually, before I go, I got this out here. Let me slide this over here. This is a 18-inch Starrett uh, machinist level. This isn't the master level. This is the machinist level. And you can't quite see it. Let me take this, this out of the way. And let me slide this up in there. Now, this is a lower sensitivity vial. This, this vial, according to Starrett, is 5 thousandths in a foot per line. And uh, so, as you can see, oh, it's the lower sensitivity level. Uh, this plate was pretty darn close. But kind of remember where these lines are, that it shows it's not quite centered. The bubble is off flush to the first line here uh, to the positive side. 
So let's do a reversal on this and see what it says. See if it says anything different here. Make sure I don't have anything under it. Slide it up there. So let me see here. It's pretty much the same. I'm going to say that it's slightly shifted off and just about flush with this line here. So I bet this one is tweaked in really, really good. But this is out of level some small amount. So let me see if I can. Uh, I'll, I'll get the. I'll get the. the uh, I'll get set up to do to show you the, the quick calculation, and uh, and then we'll see what what the calculation says I have for error in this whole setup. So okay. So here we are covering the math portion of this video for at least for level reversal. This is the paper I've been referring to. This is, I mean, there's there's a few, quite a few out on the web uh, of this type, but this is probably the clearest, most well-explained uh, paper on reversal techniques that I've found uh, that's been written. They're, uh, it's not real heavily academic. They, they geared this towards uh, trying to get this out. Uh, out into the uh, out into industry and have more people in on the uh, in the in the manufacturing environment actually utilizing these methods so they've tried to be fairly clear in their explanations as clear as they can be of course so the paper is called self calibration reversal redundancy error separation and absolute testing written by a couple of folks from the National Institute of Standards and Technology and a gentleman from the University of North Carolina. Uh, so, you know, basically they cover the whole tree hierarchy of the standards tracing all the way back to the national measurement uh, institutions. And then they go into, uh, let me see if I can get this up where you can see it. And they introduce the subject by showing how you adjust a disc sander. <laughs> Uh, we're using two blocks of wood to uh, to set it to 90. You know, you sand the faces of two blocks and rotate them around 90 degrees and butt the sanded faces. And you can tell whether the angle is less than 90, more than 90, or 90. Of course, it's 90 when the two faces butt together perfectly. Um, so, and, and actually, this is very informative. It, 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 it's really a good paper. I'm really glad I found it. Uh, and they go into the mathematics of what they call the classic reversals. Uh, and this is the level reversal section here. Over here, I don't know if I can get that in frame. And then, of course, they have some diagrams here showing the different aspects of it. Uh, of level. And down here is straight edge information, which I'm not going to cover right now. So anyway, so let's look at the math involved. So I've done some of the work up front. So let me walk you through it here. We're going to have two variables, alpha and beta. Alpha is going to be equal to the level of the plate. Obviously, it could be anything you're leveling, but in this case, it's the level of the plate. And beta is equal to the error in the level itself, how much error there is. So by taking these two readings that we took, we're going to be able to break these individual error values out through the miracle of mathematics. <laughs> so the base relationship that you start from is where the first indicator reading, I1, is equal to alpha minus beta. And then your second indicator reading, or of course our vial reading, is equal to alpha plus beta. So, you know, essentially what they're saying is, is that in one position, the, the, the amount in the vial that the level contributes, the plate contributes, and the amount the error inherent in the level contributes, add. And then any other configuration, they subtract. And this is the whole reversal concept right here. This addition and subtraction allows you to split these values out. And then uh, if you churn through the little bit of algebra that's necessary to put these two 
formulas and equations into uh, a form that we can actually get information out of that we need, uh, i.e. the value of alpha and the value of beta, we have uh, alpha is equal to the first indicator reading I1 plus the second one, I2, divided by 2. And then beta is equal to the second reading, I2 minus the first, I1, divided by 2. And I'm not going to churn through. I have churned through the algebra for this. I have. I see where they get from here to here. I don't know how many of you remember. Uh, and really, this is... Uh, some of the theory is actually linear algebra, but these are all um, techniques that you learn in like pre-calc and even uh, probably some high school, upper level high school algebra. And I really am horrible at algebra, uh, so I, I, it took me a bit to churn through it, so I'm not going to embarrass myself by doing it here. You'll just have to take it at faith, either from me and from the paper, that these two equations here are correct. So taking our data that we have, which is namely the first reading was two thousandths of an inch, and the second reading was minus one thousandths of an inch, of course, again remembering the coordinate system here that I set up arbitrarily, we get alpha is equal to two thousandths plus negative one thousandths. So adding a negative is the same as just doing subtraction. So we end up with one thousandths, two thousandths minus one thousandths is equal to one thousandths divided by two, or equal to half a thousandths. So alpha is equal to half a thousandths, which is saying that this plate with that 10 inch level over the 10 inch distance is out of level half a thousandths. Then we come down here and we go solve for beta. So beta is equal to the negative one thousandths minus the two thousandths. So minus from a minus gives you more minus, <laughs> if that's even a word or concept. So that's minus three thousandths divided by two or a negative thousandths and a half. So there is an error of a thousandths and a half in the level. That has to be adjusted out if we we're going to calibrate it. But if what we're information we're really interested in is the levelness of the plate, we have our answer and we don't have to go through the calibration. Now I don't really think people are going to use this information here when they're doing leveling. It doesn't make sense to do that. You check your level. If it's calibrated properly, it, everything's good, you just level. You go to the null, because the level is a null device. When it's on the bubble, when the bubble's in the center, the readings are nulled out. And that's what you're looking for. Uh, I guess if you were doing grade, grade gradients or grad grades or uh, doing some other type of leveling where you wanted some so much per foot, uh, then that maybe might be applicable. I don't know. Uh, primarily, I think this at this level, it's still just mainly a metrology tool where you might want to qu quantify in your results that you're publishing what the error in the level was what the actual reading was uh, and this allows you to do that but this is the introduction to get you to the one that I think you will want to use which is uh, using reversal methods and <clears throat> straight edges you know to check straightness both the straight edge and the machine tool that you're using it to check so with that I think I've covered this pretty good uh, I don't know at this point if I'm going to, I might, I might just publish this as a first video and then go into the other one as a second video. Uh, why don't you let me know in the comments below. Do you like longer videos? Would you rather have this whole subject in one nut that you can watch? Or do you prefer when you break videos up into shorter, more digestible uh, parts? So anybody that feels like commenting on that, let me know in the bottom. I'd appreciate it. Some you know feedback or comments. And with that, I guess I'll get going and uh, say thanks for watching. Bye.